Welcome to Grove Church. Uh, we're not underwater. Every Wednesday in July, we have our summer kids club, uh, and this is our scuba nautical theme. But uh, we're today we're not talking about that. We're talking about communication. So find a quiet place, uh, open your Bible to James, and let us connect with God and one another and work on our communication as God's people. Welcome to Grove Church Online. To help us center ourselves, our call to worship comes from Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than my life. My lips will glorify you. I will, I will praise you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Let us praise God together. But we realize that sometimes our own condition prevents us from praising God fully. So it's our weekly rhythm to seek to confess our sins before God, who already knows us and loves us. So uh, I will lead us in a time of prayerful confession. So use these words of your own to come before God. Lord Jesus, you said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Forgive us our lukewarm love and our disobedience. Lord, you said you may ask for anything in my name. Forgive us when we think we need to solve our own problems. Lord, you said do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We confess that our lives are often consumed by worry and anxiety. Lord, you said if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Forgive us our barren lives, Lord. Lord, you said, you must testify, for you have been with me. We confess, Lord, that we have been too often silent. Lord, you said, love each other as I've loved you. In this and so many other ways, we confess our failures and shortcomings. Amen. Amen. Here are these encouraging words from the scriptures. If we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in our hearts that God raised them from the dead, we will be saved. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks uh, for coming, for recognizing God's grace in your lives. Um, as we come together, let's spend some time recognizing the peace and restoration he's given us. So may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. So in the comment section, in your households, share signs of Christ's peace and welcome and restoration. We're so glad you're with us. Peace be with you. Welcome. Now with the children gather around, we have a special message for them. Oh, hey kids. It's Pastor Steve. This is a uh, candle, candle, right? Um... What are, where else do you see these type of things? Maybe, did anyone have a birthday? Do you have birthday candles? Do you like to blow out the birthday candles? I remember sometimes when my kids were little, they used to, everyone wanted to blow out the candles. You ever been to a birthday party where the non-birthday kid wants to blow out the candles? Yeah, it could be pretty, pretty dicey. Well, today, in the, we've been looking at the book of James. And we've been looking at this book for a long time, right? Jesus' brother James wrote, and he said, the tongue is like a fire. Okay, a 
What does that mean? Well, it means that doesn't mean that your tongue looks like fire. Doesn't mean that your tongue is hot. What? Stick out your tongue. Let me double check. Okay. Okay. It's kind of rude, isn't it? Well, James is saying that your tongue could do things that is the tongue, which means like talking, speaking, like the words coming out of my mouth, that sometimes they hurt people, right? Fire, right? You can't play with fire because fire is dangerous, right? Fire is dangerous. It's something that's helpful, but sometimes it, uh, you know, you've, there was, if you look across the street from the church building, there's a house that has that had a fire in it. We have to be careful with fire. We have people who are firefighters to make sure we're safe from fires. Fires are dangerous. And sometimes words can hurt people. Has anyone ever said something unkind to you, mean to you? Have they made fun of you? Have they said things that were not nice? And it hurt. It was not good. Sometimes we're thinking about those things, right? Sometimes it means that it's hard to be friends with them because they said some hurtful words. We have to be careful with fire. And we have to be careful with our words. We have to be careful. The Bible says to be slow to speak. That means don't say things without thinking. All right? Sometimes we want to say things that are funny. Sometimes we want to say things because people make us mad. And we, want, we hear mean things and want to say mean things back. Sometimes we want to yell at people because we get really frustrated. Sometimes we th say things we shouldn't. Sometimes we say bad words. But the Bible says slow to speak, meaning let's think about it before we say it. Just because you're mad, don't say that. Just because that person is saying, saying not nice things doesn't mean you have to say not nice things. Because their tongue is like a fire. It could be dangerous. It could hurt people. It could hurt feelings. And once we say words, we can't take them back. So let us be slow to speak. Let us think before we say things that are unkind or untrue or not nice. But fire, it's dangerous, but it's also good for birthday cakes. It's good for grilling. It's good for lighting candles that make our house smell all nice. Our words can be used nice too. They can be used to praise God. They can be used to say nice things. They can be used to say I love you to people. They can use to help people who are feeling sad. Our tongues are like fire. They can hurt people. And we have to think before we do it, before we say things. But they also can be used to, to worship God together. Actually, in a couple moments, let us sing and use our words to do good things, to worship God. Actually, I'm going to use my words right now to pray. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for these kids. We thank you, Lord, that they every every week they're learning new words, new things. Help them to think before they speak. Help them to use their words for good, for helping, not for hurting. Thank you, God, that you've made us amazing. Thank you for these opportunities to use our words for good things and for God things. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So let us use our words now to worship God. Christ. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit and has given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and he's coming back again. We believe. Faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing. In our weakness and temptations, we believe. Scripture reading for today is from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 19 to 21, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and chapter 5, verse 12. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, 
a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring, my brothers and sisters? Can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Chapter 5. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Justice. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who speaks, who guides, who leads. Help us, Lord, to focus on you. Help us to hear you. Help us to learn more about you and live in your ways. May this time together be profitable here in our lives and in life to come. Amen. If you've been with us, we've been looking at the book of James. And most letters in the New Testament have a specific church in mind. Their letters to Romans, to the church in Rome, Ephesians, those in Ephesus. Because the apostles wrote uh, that truth that was true to everyone, but specifically dealing with some uh, troublesome issues in each congregation. We actually get to know more about the congregations, the audience of the letter, by hearing what uh, the apostles, when they write a letter, uh, what are they addressing there? Um, but one of the interesting things about the, this short book of James, it is that it is written to scattered churches, to these 12 tribes scattered. So it's not written to one specific uh, congregation or the Christians in one specific town. It's written as a general letter to several Christians living in different towns and different churches. So we know that these challenges here that, we're, that James is uh, writing to about is not just, just one little issue that one church in one place is having at that time. We can uh, assume that because it was written to a large audience in a large variety of ways that uh, the Holy Spirit inspired James to address this to various churches. And uh, it speaks to us today by the power of the Holy Spirit. And these are issues and challenges that all people, not even all Christians, all people struggle with. Specifically, God's word uh, today is we could put into practice this afternoon, tomorrow morning. Things like everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry, right? That wisdom is something that anyone, regardless of where they are in life, they could benefit from. Everyone, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. You've heard this saying, surely, where it says that, you know, God has given us uh, two ears and one mouth, and we're to use them accordingly. Chances are that you need to be a better listener. We need to be better listeners. Many people are carrying stories. We're carrying the weight of things that need to be expressed. Uh, people are often misunderstood. And a lot of time, it's because we who hear... We're not ready to listen. We hear people talking, but a lot of time we're not listening. Maybe we're hearing to respond or to reply. We're not trying to listen truly and perceive things from their situation. Instead, we're eager to give advice or to fix their problem or correct the wrong thinking. I know I've heard people say, oh, that person is shy or antisocial or clammed up. That person doesn't talk. But what normally is the case is that 
we haven't given those people the space they need to share, the space they need to talk freely. We feel the silence, not giving those who are slow to speak the space where they can communicate. We get anxious about the emptiness, and we, or we reply quickly and interrupt other people's thoughts. A lot of times that we're listening, we're more hearing. It's hard, you know, because sometimes you feel like you need to share your advice. Maybe you're like, Pastor Steve, I know that person is wrong right from the gate. Why am I going to listen to them go on and on? When I know what they need to do, when I know how wrong they are, where I know their opinions already. Why do I have to listen to to someone say wrong things. We want to jump to correct. Or maybe you're tired of hearing that same old story and are eager to change the topic. So here's, that while this wisdom is good for everyone, this is how us as believers, as followers of Christ, as Christians, this is how we participate in the conversation, taking this wise counsel inspired by the Holy Spirit. We're to show fruits of the Spirit. We're to show evidence of what God's been doing in our lives, in our conversations with others. We're to be patient. We're to show loving kindness. And that helps us as we listen, if we're being patient, and we're showing loving kindness, that helps us to fully hear other people. And we ask God's help to do it because it's many of us, that's not our default. Our default is not to be slow to listen. You know, so we ask God's help because God continues to shape us. God continues to form us. God continues to give us strength to be more like him. Pause and think about your average conversations. Are you, do you speak for more than 50% of the time? If you do, maybe this is for you, this encouragement to be slow to listen. I mean, slow to speak, to listen first. And when listening, it doesn't mean just holding in your response. You've been there, I've been there, where someone's talking and you just have, okay, I heard that. Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the pause. I'm waiting for the place. Or maybe you don't even pause, you just can jump in. And you can't hold everything else they're saying because you're already holding your reply. That's hearing, but not listening. When I work with couples in premarital counseling, uh, we do a reflective listening exercise. So pretty much one person is telling about how, uh, you know, is, is addressing something, a concern or desire, and uh, the future spouse is listening. Not to give a reply, but actually to respond by saying, okay, what I heard you say is, and kind of repeat it in their own words, to make sure that, that there is understanding there, and to help the future spouse feel listened to. And there's a chance sometimes when that happens, it's clear. And other times, uh, the person speaking was saying, actually, that's not what I was saying, or that's not what I meant, or where I'm going. And there's room for a clarification to be understood and to understand. This biblical direction on listening is, and this practice of reflective listening that I do with the couples is particularly useful in times when there's strong feelings, when things can get heated, when there's massive understanding, misunderstanding. As I said, this letter was circulating to a bunch of believers, a bunch of churches, because being slow to anger, it's a universal problem. Being quick to listen and slow to anger, that's not the way life normally functions by default. You know, to be honest with you, I used to have more of a temper. Temp I used to have more of a temper. I used to struggle with, uh, yeah, just kind of going off the handle. And God has really worked with me in the last uh, 20 plus years. But occasionally, I still get angry. And it's like almost like a cartoon. I feel it kind of rising within me. I feel my face turn flush as I hear things that uh, infuriate me. It's like a cartoon, like those cartoons where you see the red kind of go whoop, like a thermometer. Yeah, I feel my anger rise. And when I'm aware of that, I realize that what I'm going to say or do next is probably not the most helpful thing. What I say or do, the way I respond when I'm feeling that flush of anger is, could be easily something that I regret. That I might damage that relationship because I'm just reacting out of my feelings. 
that I'm, I'm quick, I'm quickly becoming angry. And I'm ready to lash out. I'm ready to put people in their place. But the Bible says to be quick to listen, but slow to become angry. Right? Because then we can change the focus. We can realize and say, okay, what I'm doing now, what I'm going to do now is not going to be helpful. It's going to be harmful. The person that I'm hearing is saying some things that are wrong or getting me upset or rude or, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't know what they're talking about, right? That's what you're kind of thinking. But the way I reply is going to make things worse. It's not going to make things better. It's going to prevent progress. Because my, my response is going to be complicating the situation. It's not going to help. I'm just going to add more fuel to the fire. It's not easy. It's not easy to, to address our anger. Many of us have this trouble. James uh, chapter 3, verse 2, as you heard, describes a tongue like a, like a bit guiding a large animal or like a rudder steering a large ship, right? The, the comparison is something small that, that guides something big. Something small that can change your whole course, that can change your direction, that can change your life or at least your day that could significantly alter your relationships. A couple words said from your tongue. James talked about the tongue is like a spark that can cause a fire. Last Sunday evening, uh, folks left the church around three or four o'clock. We were getting ready for a kids club, so it was late evening, and uh, someone came back, a family came back to drop off some supplies for our kids program. And uh, when they came, there was billows of smoke, so much so that when we looked in the cemetery, it looked like there was fog rolling in. Not until you open the front door of the parsonage and you smell the aroma, you smell that it was actual fire. And there we go, and I, if I was, I had to see where it comes in, so I kind of wind my way through the church building to avoid being outside to see, is this fire, you know, uh, the, these billows of smoke, is this something that is, is, is dangerous? And then I stood there in the lawn of the church uh, watching the firefighters fight the blaze. There were spectators lined up against the church fence. And I was just on the church lawn. I did not go to Kennedy Boulevard to see the fire. Um, but when I came home, you could smell the smoke on me. Right? My clothes had to change. My clothes at the shower. It was, it was on my clothes. It was on my hair. Uh, all this fire, all this damage done, the building next to it was an empty building, thank God. No, uh, as, far as, I'm, as far as I heard, no one got hurt. But the building next door, there was some evidence of fire and burning there. Right? Because that, what started as a smaller fire evidently consumed the house and the smoke, you know, uh, engulfed, the smoke engulfed our whole cemetery, our whole building, our whole parking lot. Even though we never, I never even crossed the street to Union City uh, to see where the fire was. What I'm saying is that one fire impacted a whole neighborhood, hundreds of people. Right? It's likely that that fire started from something smaller that went out of control. Small sparks have consequences and, and repercussions. Right? That's what James is saying. We have to realize that our words, the small sparks of our words, have consequences and repercussions. The way we use our words, the comments that people post online. Sometimes people get a little more bold, a little more bravado when uh, they're replying online to strangers. But they impact people, our words. It's likely you in your, in your life, that sometime in your life, if you dig de uh, deep, that you carry the scars of something that someone said about you. Right? There's some people that said hurtful things, and years later, you still feel it. Maybe you've already forgiven them. Maybe it's hard to forgive. Maybe every time you're in that situation, you think of those words of discouragement that they shared with you, the doubts that they sowed in your mind, the fears. Maybe they've made you a little apprehensive because you hear the voice of those words that said things about you. For me, I, I've forgiven people about things they said about me, but they're things that still hurt. 
There's relationships I have that have been undermined by uh, things said flippantly in a conversation 15 or 20 years ago. I've forgiven, but it's hard to build that trust again. And to be honest, I don't think that the words and phrases that I think that, that, that kind of still echo with me, I don't think the people who said that gave it much thought. I think they just spoke in the moment. They spoke in the moment was on the top of their mind and they have damaged relationship with me. People I care about. We can easily say harmful things without thinking. That's where to slow to speak. That's where we're slow to become angry. Because we can release some toxic things. We can hurt relationships that we really care about. We can uh, damage uh, different people's perceptions of themselves for decades. Right? By, by thoughtless words. Back in the day, depending on your age, You'll know this reference. Uh, we used to have commercials on TV with Smokey the Bear. If you don't remember Smokey the Bear, he was he, this bear, uh, and he was kind of dressed in like a ranger uniform. And he reminded my generation, uh, those who watch TV in my generation, that he said to us, he looked at us through the magic of TV commercials and said, only you can prevent forest fires. Only you could, and as someone growing up in the Bronx, uh, far from any forest, I remember thinking this weighty charge of my role in preserving the forest. Do you remember that commercial? Right? He, let, he let us know that any time of leaving a campfire uh, un unguarded or matches, smoking, could devastate forests. If the book of, if Smokey the Bear read the book of James, he would warn us that our tongues are a fire. That if we are slow to speak, we can prevent the damage of relationships, the destruction of people's self-image. That we can stop burning down relationships, that burning the scars that people leave from the words that were said to them and about them. The thoughtless words, like those Smokey the Bear said, those thoughtless actions in the forest can have horrible consequences. The thoughtless words that we say, just out of emotion, just in the movement, maybe just to be quick or funny or just to think without a filter, just to be ourselves, can damage and destroy. So James tells, uh, speaks about taming the tongue in chapter 3, verse 2, and says, we all stumble many ways. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect and able to keep their whole body in check. Keep your whole body in check. We need to keep our bodies in check. Different parts of our bodies are blessings and bring different challenges, right? We need to guard our hearts. The Bible says it's the wellspring of life. We have to renew our minds. We need to show sexual discipline below our belts. We need to learn to restrain our speech. James says that our, our tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With powerful poetry there. Right? Restless evil full of deadly poison. Right? Once the poison leaves the bottle and, and contaminates environments, it's hard to put back. So we're to be slow to speak. We have to make sure that we keep our fire under control. To make sure that we're doing things in our relationship to listen, to hear, to understand, and not just to lash out, not just to cut people down. The things that we struggle with can be used for great and good purposes, right? Normally, that's the way it is. Normally, your strengths, whatever your strengths are, have a, uh, a shadow side that also could contribute to your weakness. The things that give us trouble can also be surrendered for God's good and glory. At the day after the fire destroyed the house, totally unrelated, I already had plans with my parents, and I was grilling, and grilling, uh, and I smelled like you know some charcoal, lump charcoal we use there. And I, at the end of the day, I smelled again like smoke, but this time uh, there were bratwursts that we could serve as a family, use it for good. 
Bible continues this theme. James chapter four, verse nine says that, you know, with, with our tongue, we praise God, our, our Lord, our Father, and we curse human beings who've been made in his image, right? The same tongue that, that produces cursing also produces praise and blessing. It should not be, right? We should devote our bodies for God's work. We should devote our mouths, our tongues, the words we speak. And part of this journey of sanctification, of getting holy, of becoming more like Jesus, of letting God invade our lives, is God invading our speech. That the words we say may reflect his kingdom. Slowly giving up parts of our bodies, of our schedules, of our time, our thoughts, over to Jesus' lordship. Some of you are not really used to singing for worship. If you come here on Sunday morning, there's a... Some of us struggle with that singing loud. You know, maybe why? Maybe you don't like to sing because it's not your musical style. Maybe you're not familiar with the songs. But can I tell you that worshiping God with words and songs is a spiritual discipline. You're saying good and godly and biblical things with your mouth. You're you saying, mouth, you've, you've been a little bit off, but we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to speak biblical truths. You've said and done, you know, tongue, you've started a couple fires this week. You've been rebellious. But now we're going to restrain and have you to glorify the Lord. You're going to speak eternal truths. You're going to worship God. You're going to read the Bible. You're going to pray aloud. Sometimes it's easier to curse than to praise. Sometimes it's easier to share gossip than share the gospel. Right? Almost always. But we're to take our tongues, we're to take part by part, thought by thought, action by action, and submit it to God. And our speech is included in that. We take to take our thoughts and our words captive and use them for God's glory. So we're slow to speak and make sure what we speak is true. That what we said is glorify God. That we use our words to build up and not to burn down. Let us pray. Gracious God, you've given us words. You've given us mouths. You give us the ability to communicate with loved ones and strangers. You give us the opportunity to share news. You give us times to listen, to hear, to embrace, to encourage, to support. Lord, help us to take our tongues and to submit it to your glory, that we may speak truth, that we may proclaim your word, that we may sing your praise. God, we lift up the needs in our community, Lord. We lift up the times of anger and violence. Lord, we pray on this July uh, 4th weekend, Lord, we thank you for our country. We thank you for the freedoms we have to gather here in this building and in homes, hearing and proclaiming your word. We pray, God, that you may help us, Lord, in this time of election season, Lord, where where we're called to to participate in this, uh, this amazing political system. Lord, we pray that you give us wisdom of wisdom, how we can be citizens of your kingdom of heaven, the perfect kingdom of God, and uh, citizens of an in, imperfect human government, Lord. That, that's all the governments we have here, Lord. But help us to represent you. Help us to be wise in our stewardship and our civic responsibility, responsibilities. Help us to be good global citizens, Lord, as we see wars and rumors of wars, as we see tragedy and bloodshed and greed in our community, but also in nations across the world. We pray, we we await your kingdom coming. We await the the peace that you'll bring. We await the, the sovereignty of your nation, where every knee will bend and call you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, Lord, as we do that as your church, help us to live peaceably 
and prophetically here in our, the brokenness of our world. And we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to conclude our time in the, by having the Lord's Supper together. So uh, find a piece of bread or a cracker um, or wine and grape juice uh, as we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is in our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times in all places. O Lord, our creator, almighty and everlasting God, you created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserved us by your providence. But you've shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. the power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of him coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us a communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up into all things into Christ our Lord. And as these grains have been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given it, he broke it and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, as we have bread in different homes, in different places, in different times, but let us feast on God's bread together. Please now partake of the bread. In the same manner also he took the cup when that sub saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This as often as drink of it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, we have different cups of different sizes, maybe some grape juice, some wine. But this is the cup that God has filled for us of the blood of his son for our forgiveness of sins. Partake of your cup, of Christ's cup, together. Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at his table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion for his children, 
So the Lord has compassion for those who fear him, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, and will also give us all things with him. Therefore shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Amen and amen. We thank you for joining us. We know there's a lot of things you can do online with your time, but thank you for being part of our online church family at Grove. Uh, thank you for uh, those who have given generously. Uh, one of the things that you're giving has helped is this Summer Kids Club program that we provide free to any child in the community that's uh, kindergarten through seventh grade. Every Wednesday we have uh, snacks for them, we have activities, we have giveaways. Uh, you have, some of you have volunteered your time and thank you for giving to the Lord, helping us to be a blessing to the children uh, in this neighborhood as well. Uh, we have another song of worship and some reflection questions as we dig deeper, uh, as we learn to be uh, quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to become angry. So receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you now and always.
Worthy is the 